Nice big breath in through your nose. And now nice loud exhale breath out through your mouth. And then as you press that air out, feel your lower back, your upper shoulder blades, everything kind of spread against the mat and the floor. And then feel the arches of your feet anchored together and your inner thighs drop open. Begin the audible breath. You know, you hear it yourself, you feel it yourself. It's a little different for everybody, but um, of ujjayi breath. Inhale through the nose, through the back of the throat, and exhale through the, the nose, through the back of the throat. The breath is never meant to be perfect. It's there to just support you. So don't get so caught up on it. Just kind of breathe through the flow of the sequence. Three more breaths. Arrive. Good, you're gonna blink your eyes open. You're gonna grab your block in between your hands the long way, this direction, okay? Place it in between your hands, uh-huh. You're gonna stretch your legs straight out in front of you and you're gonna bring the block straight up over your head on the floor. For anybody that has a shoulder issue, just let me know and we'll find something else, okay? So I want you to essentially just get your body in a very tall standing up position. I want you to flex your feet, activate your hands, like press, firm into the blocks and begin to feel. So what you're doing is, is you're zipping yourself up. You're just zipping everything up. And just feel the nature of the body, like your lower back and that nat naturally just wants to kind of pop up off the floor. See if you can engage a little more. Press, press into the ground, press into the block, flex the feet strong. You're gonna keep your arms like this, okay? We're gonna lift the legs up a little and you're gonna to begin to bend your right leg on an angle. The left leg's gonna hover and then you're gonna pedal it out. So it's like essentially like you're doing a little bicycle, but you're not using your arms. The arms are staying back behind you. They're active and they're engaged. Your neck stays neutral and long and everyone's just gonna move at their own pace. You could point or flex the foot just depending on what feels better in your body. So you're just moving. You're just moving the legs. You're feeling your lower back spread across the mat. So you have to draw the belly in to the back of the spine so that lower back stays down. And you pick an angle that works. Just keep going like this. So the longer you keep your arms like this, the more sensation you're going to get. So I know I'm doing it and I'm beginning to feel a little tingly. Breathing and moving. Stay with it, couple more. Lower back, firm it up, press it down and keep moving the legs, keep pressing the arms for the last five, four, three, two, one. So the left leg's gonna bend in, the right leg's gonna extend out. You're gonna take that block and you're gonna side crunch over to the left. So the block's gonna go, go the other way, Greg. And then you're gonna crunch this way for one, two, three, four. Go a little lower. Yeah, like towards your hip. There you go, five. Six, aren't you happy to see me? Seven, eight, nine, ten. For the last ten, nine, eight, seven. It's a small movement, it's isometric. Four, three, two, one. You're gonna switch. One, two, three, four. Don't do it with your neck, keep the neck neutral. So less is more. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. For another ten, nine, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So the legs are gonna go up on an angle. The block is gonna go towards the legs. So it's like a little bit of like a supported bridge boat here. Yep. The arms are gonna go back behind you. The legs are gonna lower. Everything drops and then you jackknife it back up for one. You got it? For two, you go at your own pace for three. Don't lower as much at the back. It's sensitive for four. Yeah, so it's a powerful crunch for five. Yep, for six. Keep the body really long for seven. Good, for eight, for nine, for 10. Give me another five. 
four, good, crunch it up for three, two, and one. Release the block, hug the knees in, give them a good squeeze. Yep, rock and roll several times, cross the ankles at the top of the mat, may not look so pretty. Step into a tabletop position. Yep, hands directly underneath the shoulders. Sink the spine down and look forward. Tops of the feet can be down or the toes can be curled. You pick and then round the spine deeply and look in just basic movement. Inhale, sinking the spine down and looking forward. You got it, yep. Exhale, rounding the spine deeply and looking in. Good, again, inhale, sinking spine down and looking forward. Exhale, rounding the spine deeply and looking in one more. Sink the spine down and look forward. Exhale, round deeply and look in. Come to a flat back tabletop position. Curl the toes into the mat, lift the knees up an inch and hover them. There you go. Hover, hover, hover. And then slowly start to lift your hips way up and back and find your first downward facing dog. And you've never been so grateful to find your first down dog. Right. It feels like a dream come true. Take up a lot of space on the mat this morning. Palms spread wide. Index fingers are forward. I mean, I've been doing this for 25 years. I still look at my hands every time I go to a down dog and just make sure that they're forward or even a little bit turned out. If the hamstrings feel super jammed up today or back feels tight, you definitely want to bend your knees a little bit or a lot. There's no judgment here. You find what works. The center of your heel, the sensation of it is that it's pressing down towards the mat. Obviously, that doesn't happen for everybody. Breathe the hips way up off the shoulders. Looks good. And your shoulders, if you can, let them move away from your ears. And then find a moment of stillness, which honestly is the hardest part of the practice the mind, the body, the breath supporting it, and just being still. Outer triceps zip up, pit of the belly draws in, roll forward to plank like an ocean wave. Mm -hmm. Stack the body up nice and neatly. Shoulders over elbows, elbows over wrists. This look good. Everyone's so calm. This is great. Let's ride the calm wave into September. <laughs> together as a strong force. At any point you need to modify plank, you drop your knees. Yep. Alignment is everything here. Lead a little more with your heart and chest. When I say that, that doesn't mean to lead with your head. Your head is neutral, part of your spine. Yep. More weight forward on your tippy toes. Now your hands and feet have found their place. All you need to do is lift your hips up and back down dog. And for some of us, it feels a little funny because it feels a little longer. Yeah. Plank position, come all the way forward. Yep. Second, you come forward, lead with your chest. Perfect. Drop your knees down at an angle, everybody. Bring your weight forward about two inches towards the front of the room and then lower halfway to a yoga push up. The elbows will slide by your side body. The shoulders should not dump below the elbows. Yep. And then revisit your supported plank in one piece. That's it. So slow and charged up. I know it's annoying. Bring the weight forward halfway to a supported push up. Revisit your supported plank, one piece. Good. Again, halfway supported push up. Supported plank. Uh huh. Knees, and then your hips are just gonna go back, child's pose. Your knees are gonna go nice and wide. And gonna drop your seat, energize your arms forward, spread your palms across the mat. Rock forward, you're gonna come back to that supported tabletop, supported plank position. So just bring that weight back forward. Lower halfway supported push up. Revisit supported plank. Good, you got it. Halfway supported push up. Revisit supported plank. One more time. Halfway supported push up. Don't worry, we'll move on soon. Supported plank. Seat back, child's pose. Yep. Down dog. So keep that in mind as we move through the practice. You don't have to take a zillion push ups in here. You know, it's vinyasa, so we do do a lot of push ups, but you decide how much you want to do. 
Okay. Roll forward plank. One more. Pick your push up here. If you like the supported ones, you go for that again. No problem at all. Or just hold plank. This time you'll peel, pull through a back bend of choice, an up dog, a baby cobra. You decide what feels best in your body. You press even through your hands, the tops of your feet. The next day is neutral. Hips go up and back down dog. Walk your feet up to your hands. Now that could be two really big steps or it could be 12 you know, small steps to get there. Long spine when you arrive. If your hands are dangling like wet noodles, bring your hands to your shins or blocks. Exhale the breath, fold into yourself, let your head go. Do that again. Inhale, long spine, set it up. Exhale the breath, fold. Root to rise, come all the way up. Drag it to prayer, drop your arms. Good. Arms go straight up towards the sky. Pause. Remember we were laying on the ground? This is the same feeling. I want you to really feel like you're finding fire from the ground through your fingertips. You're going to keep that throughout the sequence. Exhale the breath, forward fold. Long spine sets you up. You're gonna step, step to plank. Even if you've had a lot of coffee this morning, you're feeling perky, it's just step, step to plank. Halfway to your push up. Up dog or cobra, pull yourself in. Hips go up and back down dog. I like to pick up my kids with music like this playing in it really loud. Yeah, and then like, what are you listening to? Arms stay straight, look where you wanna go. You can step, step, you can float to the top of the mat if you feel like you can jump easily. Long spine, fold. Root to rise. Drag it to prayer, drop your arms. Just like that, arms go straight up. Just move easy. Dive over bent knees, forward fold. Long spine. Step, step, plank, or hop light to your low push-up. You pick. Up dog is smooth, even. You got it. Hips go up and back down dog. Each one gets a little better, and if it's not, you're going to have to talk it up. Arms stay straight. Look where you want to go. Step or float, top of mat, land light. Long spine. Fold. Root to rise. Come all the way up. Drag it to prayer. Drop your arms. Arms go straight up, dive over bent knees, forward fold. Long spine to prepare, step or float through your vinyasa. Plank to a push up, up dog or cobra, hips go up and back down dog. Arms stay straight, look where you want to go, step or float, top of mat, get their light. Long spine, fold, root to rise, come all the way up, anchor yourself. Drag it to prayer, drop your arms. Arms go straight up, dive over bent knees, forward fold. Long spine sets you up, step or float through your vinyasa. Adding or subtracting push-ups and back bends at this point. Up dog is smooth. Hips go up and back, down dog. You're gonna breathe your right leg up and back to a three-legged down dog. So when you lift your leg, lift with integrity and intention. Point your right toes, come forward and hug your right knee straight in. Give it a good little squeeze towards the chest. Look forward with your eyes. Step the right foot forward and through. Yeah, so you could use your hands to get that foot all the way up there. Be on your fingertips. Yeah, drop your back knee, everybody. You can pad the knee if you need to slide a little towel under that. When you drop your knee, you wanna make sure the knee is on an angle. Yeah, otherwise it does not feel good. Sweep your arms up, supported lunge. Yeah, and then just depending on what's happening in your lower back, maybe being a little more forward doesn't feel great. You could always pull out of it a little bit. Yep. So this stretches the front line. This is our psoas, our walking muscle, or the running muscle, the life muscle. We have to move using our psoas and everything that we do. Yeah. Open a little wider. You're gonna get a little bit more space through your chest. There you go. Two more breaths. Be patient. So keeping your legs just as they are, all you're gonna do is rest your stomach on your thigh and bring your arms back. That's it. So make it like a connection, like your stomach and your thigh are one. 
Now integrate your back left knee and start to lift it up off the ground. And don't lift your torso. Keep everything glued down. Yeah, you should feel even more. All sorts of feelings, all sorts of good stuff. Yeah. Good. Now soften the left knee and start to bring your arms out and up or straight up into a high lunge, crescent lunge. Yes. If your back feels sensitive, you could tip your torso a little bit forward. And sometimes that takes you out of your low back. That's great. Especially if you just traveled a bunch. Yeah. The traveling kills your lower back. Breathe guys, be patient. So you have to get to the posture and then unfortunately we have to hold the posture because that's where the stuff happens. We're looking for the stuff, the good stuff, like the inside of the Oreo. Yeah, that's where you are right now. Hands to frame your front foot, plank position. You're gonna hold plank or you're gonna decide to hold a low push up chaturanga, you pick. I don't know how much juice you got today, so you pick what you wanna do. Plank position. Good job, hips go up and back, down dog. Breathe your left leg up and back, three-legged down dog. Lift with, you know, lift it in space with some integrity. Point your left toes, come forward, hug your left knee and give it a good little squeeze. Look forward with your eyes, your arms stay straight up and down, step your left foot forward and through. Be on your fingertips, drop your back knee on an angle, pat it if you need to. Yep. Then rise supported lunge. The left thigh bone slides back into the hip socket. Your right thigh is on an angle. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So sometimes when you open up your arms a little, it gives you a little more space in the collarbone to, to breathe. And you're feeling, you're feeling that front line getting a nice stretch. Stay with it, couple more breaths. Begin to, begin to tip your torso forward and bring your arms back alongside your body. Make one like connection with your stomach on your thigh and your thigh on your stomach. Good, then integrate your back right knee, do it slow. So you're in a hovering low lunge. You're staying low, your palms face the ground so the shoulders slide down your back. Your left hip grips in, your back leg charges up. Now, soften your right knee just a tad and start to lift your torso up with control, high lunge, crescent lunge. And then you can decide, like maybe that back knee needs to keep a little bend. Maybe the torso needs to come forward a little if you feel tight. So we all have different bodies, different things going on. Feel the weight in that standing left heel. Quiet your mind and breathe. Hands to the ground. This time I want you to spring to the top of the mat. It may not be so springy, so you could just step. Long spine feet can be together or separated. Exhale the breath, let's fold together. We'll sit together into our first chair pose, which is always amazing. It's a dream come true. Sit back, yep. <laughs> yeah. So, so for seasonal change, we have to prepare now for skiing and snowboarding. So chair pose comes in handy, right? Sit way back. Your feet can be together or separated. It doesn't matter. Now I want you to feel the weight in your heels. I want you to press up to stand up, drag it to prayer, drop your arms. Now we're going to loop everything together. So exciting. Arms go straight up towards the sky, heavy in your heels for chair. Sit way back. Dive over bent knees, forward fold, let your head go. Long spine sets you up. You're going to step, float, skip, crawl, however you want to get there, chaturanga. The up dog is smooth. Hips go up and back down dog. The right foot forward, the back foot turns, rise on your breath, warrior one. For some reason, warrior one doesn't work, crescent lunge is more your jam, take that, it's fine. Hands to the earth, plank position. Decide what you need or you don't need. Chaturanga push-ups there, up dog available. Hips go up and back, down dog. The left foot forward, the back foot turns, together we come up, 
On the breath, rise, warrior one. To the floor we go, chaturanga. Up dog is smooth. Hips go up and back, down dog, we'd be still in down dog. Good, arms stay straight. Look where you wanna go, step, float, skip, get light to the top. Long spine, fold. Find your way back to that chair, weights in your heels. Shoot up to stand up, drag it to prayer, drop your arms. That was one, here we go, arms go up. Heavy in the heels for chair. Dive over bent knees, forward fold. Long spine sets you up. Step, step, float through your vinyasa. That was nice, Megan. It was a very light hop, up dog. Hips go up and back, down dog. Right foot lands, back foot turns, rise in the breath, warrior one. Back down we go through your vinyasa. Yep, looking good. Left foot lands, back foot turns. Together we come up, rise, warrior one. To the floor we go, take your time, chaturanga. So it's easy to rush through this stuff. It's much harder to go slow. Yep. Down dog we hold. The arms stay straight, look where you wanna go. Step or float to the top, land light. Long spine, fold in half. Sit again into chair, weight moves into your heels. Shoot up to stand up, drag it to prayer, drop your arms. Good news, we're just gonna do one more. Yeah, arms go straight up. Heavy in your heels, chair pose. Dive over bent knees, forward fold, let your head and your jaw go. Long spine, set it up, step or float through your vinyasa. vinyasa. Up dog is smooth. Hips go up and back down dog. The right foot lands, the back foot turns, we rise, first warrior. To the floor we go. You move at your own pace. If we're moving faster, you slow it down. It's all good. When you get to your down dog, step the left foot forward, rise, warrior one. To the floor we go, chaturanga. The upward facing dog, smooth. Hips go up and back, downward facing dog. Breathe your right leg up and back, three-legged down dog. Yeah. Come forward to plank and take your right knee to the back of the right tricep. Now, it may not actually touch, so it just goes in that general direction. It could be really far from there. Yeah. Hug the right knee straight in. Step your right foot towards your right wrist. Yes, okay? Keep your right, yeah, walk it a little bit more to the right, your right foot. Now, keeping your right foot a little wider from your left foot, you're going to turn your back foot in a wide first warrior. So your right foot and your left foot are almost like the entire width of the mat, believe it or not. Try it. And then rise first warrior. So you're like in this very wide position. This feels great because the back foot can really anchor. You could really get the pelvis to align. Yeah. Yeah. Drop your arms alongside your body. You're going to interlace your hands loosely, tightly, whatever feels good in your shoulders. Inhale the breath, lift the chest. Exhale, we're going to take humble warrior in this wide positioning. Yeah. Now, you don't have to go all the way down. You can just go a little bit. Don't force it. Right hip grips in, left side of the body turns forward. You got it, Greg. Even if that back foot pops up a little, it's fine. Right hip has to really do its job. Hug it under, stay with it. Anchor strong, start to rise. Sweep the arms up, warrior one, and let the hands gather in a prayer straight up towards the sky, straight up towards the sky, that's it. Tip them a little bit forward and that's gonna get the shoulders to align, just the arms, not the torso, perfect. Hands to the earth, plank position. Chaturanga push-up, up dogs, hips go up and back, down dog. You're going to breathe your left leg up and back, three-legged down dog. 
Come forward, left knee, left tricep in the general direction. Doesn't have to touch or even be close. Hug it straight in. Step the left foot all the way towards the left wrist and then walk it a little bit more over. Yeah, even a little wider. Perfect. Turn the back foot on a sharp angle. Second you do that, the left hip pops out. So grip it in. Your left foot and your right foot are almost the entire width of the mat. Then rise first warrior. Yeah. Doesn't this feel good? Yeah, this really gets you open. Drop your arms alongside your body and it looks good. Good. Inhale the breath, open the chest. Exhale, you're gonna start to fold into your humble, but you might not get as far, you might get further, you know, it's hard to say. See Kim, this, this works much better for you. When you're in the tighter, shorter stance, it's like, eh, you're locked up. Looks really good, guys. Anchor that back foot only if that's available to you. Left hip grips in, and you just breathe. Stay with it, couple more breaths. The left hip likes to do a little tricky business and, and stick out. So grip it in, activate your right quadricep, the muscles around that kneecap, up the lift. <clears throat> Press strong through your feet and legs. As you come up, the arms anchor together, the hands come to prayer, but they're a little off-centered, so a little bit more forward. Yeah, and then the hands come down to frame your front foot plank position. Chaturanga push-up. Up dog, smooth operation. Hips go up and back, down dog. The right foot steps smack in between your hands. We cartwheel open, warrior two. It's gonna feel a lot better now, warrior two. Yeah. If you got a fancy mat, your right foot and your back foot can go on that center line. If it's more old school, just envision a line from your right heel to your back left arch. Yeah, your right thigh rolls open. Your arms energize in opposite directions. The nature of our body is to like lean a little more into it. See if you can find some symmetry in your body. You can even close your eyes for a few breaths. This pose is truly like riding a wave, right? If you focus on just being up, you focus on everything kind of tightening up. If you focus on the wave dropping down, lengthen your tailbone, soften the shoulders down your back and ride the exhale breath. And with the exhale breath, the inhale breath comes easier. There's less struggle. Rest your right arm on the top of your right thigh. Even if you have a more advanced expression of it, take it this way today. Yeah. Right shoulder softens down the back. Left arm straight up or up and over your ear. Yeah. Up, up, straight up, go straight up, go straight up. Don't, don't, don't stress it. Go straight towards the sky. Don't even bring the arm over. Yeah, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. The shoulder doesn't want to go that way. We got it. Less torture. Ease. So the right hip, guys, grip it under and turn your bottom right ribs. Good. So from this warrior two, modified extended side angle, you're going to circle the arm and pull back up warrior two. We're going to reverse the warrior and straighten the front right leg on track. So you're in reverse trikonasana, triangle pose. And then we'll pivot into triangle. Good. Block hand to shin, hand to quadricep if the hand doesn't go all the way down. So the trick with this yoga is that you have to find enough, just enough to give and not take too much. You got to go in a happy medium. Yeah. And we never know what we're going to get. So breathing, paying attention. and settling into it. Grip the hips in. Keep it all together, guys. Zip everything up. You're gonna look down and just step right up into Arda. The block is right there for you. It's a balancing pose. 
I like to pl place that block in its highest setting, about six, eight, even 10 inches off the edge of that right baby toe. Yeah, and then you can play with coming to your fingertips or maybe knuckling the block. Yeah, it's like a big yawn in your body. Flex the left toes. Your left hand can even be on your left hip. Yeah, that's a good place to be because it's giving you info, like what's happening in my body. Yeah. Grip your right hip in. And if you fall, it's just yoga, don't worry. You try again, bring your block a little further out and it's gonna be easier. Add in whatever you need here. If you like to bind, be a binder. The kick goes behind you in the bind. Nice, Jackies. You got it. Regular Arda. Step back, warrior two. Might be two steps to get you back, but that was pretty successful, I have to say. Roll that right thigh open, yeah. Place the right hand on the instep of the right foot now. Use your block, please. Place it up high. If you prefer the first option where we had our arm on thigh, this time you can wrap your left arm behind your back. So, yeah, your hand is either even on a block to the instep of the foot or your arm's on the top of your thigh and your hand can wrap behind you. It might not go all the way, just go halfway. If you can wrap all the way, you're reaching for the inner thigh, but you know, you just have to kind of feel it out. So we're looking for a back bend and a hip opener together. Soften your right shoulder down your back, rip that right hip in. You got three more breaths, make it count for today. Good job. Warrior two, pull it up. You got it, never gets old. Take it to the floor through a vinyasa. When you hit your vinyasa, enjoy the push up. It is possible, the up dog. Hips go up and back down dog. Now I have to remember all that, God bless me. Step the left foot forward, back foot turns, cartwheel open, warrior two. Warrior two. Okay, now there's no merit to guide you, you just have to kind of feel it through. Rotate your left thigh open. So think inside of your right thigh to the outside of the baby toe. Turn your back toes a little more towards the front. Yeah, and then that hip is on a nice angle and you can really lengthen and sit. And then close your eyes for a few breaths. So whatever you're feeling is just temporary. Sit a little deeper. As you exhale the breath out, find more space in your body. So keep the lower half of the body, just rest your arm on the top of your thigh. Now the right arm, it might just be straight up, okay? It doesn't have to go up and forward. If the shoulder's a little locked up here, just have it straight up. Soften the left shoulder down your back. You having an Amazon delivery? I'm kidding. The, the the Apple watches are wonderful, but they're super annoying. It's like there's someone at the front door. I'm like, that's great. I'm not home. Yeah. Rotate your left hip in. Yeah. <laughs> Turn your bottom ribs. Looks good. Nice work. Circle it up, warrior two. Reverse the warrior. Straighten the left leg on track, reverse triangle, triangle pose. Anywhere across the front of the shin, and you can pick the distance. If you need to sc scooch your back foot in, scooch it in. Use a block to the outside of the calf, but honestly, I like just grabbing anywhere my hand is gonna kind of rest along the front of that left quadricep, shin. Yeah, just make a connection. There's a little lean back action. Yeah. Zip up the side body. Look down and step up into Arda in one piece. Use your block. The trick with Arda is to keep your left foot forward. Yeah, it likes to turn in on an angle. Yeah, it looks very good. You could get a little lighter on your fingertips. You can even come to a knuckled hand.
stay with it. If you're binding, you bind. If not, you just stay. A couple more breaths. Yeah, it looks good, Cheryl. Kick behind you. You're going to get that psoas and that nice back bend. Regular Arda. Regular Arda. Giant step back, warrior two. Left hand to the instep of the left foot or arm back to the top of the thigh, right arm straight up. You can go right into that half bind. Yeah. Even if the hand goes halfway around your back or your hand just slides to your hip, that's going to put the shoulder in a nice rotation. Kristen looks good. Grip that left hip under you and turn your left ribs from left to right. So your ribs go towards the ceiling. Then lean back a tiny bit. You have three more breaths. Warrior two, pull it up. Circle it to the floor, plank position. When you hit plank, bring your feet together. Lean on your right hand for Vashi Sats in a side plank. Yeah. Modify with staggering the feet or dropping your bottom right knee down. Yeah, the bottom knee to the floor is a good option for a lot of us. Plank position. You can do it. Lean on your left hand, Vashi Stasana. You pick one that you know you can hold. Dropping your bottom knee, stagger. I stagger the feet. I find having the right foot in this case in front of the left foot actually gives the, the pelvis a little more support. You got it. Top arm straight up or anywhere alongside your body that works. Stay with it. Plank position, slow. Halfway to a push-up, because you're strong. Up dog pulls you through your body, press even. Hips go up and back, down dog. Wasn't that amazing? That was wonderful. Look where you want to go, step or float to the top. Get there light. Long spine, fold. Sit into that chair. Drag the hands to prayer. Inhale the breath, hook and twist towards the right. You don't have to fully twist. You can go into a little air twist. Yeah. What we're looking for is that our feet, our shins, our knees, and our hips are all creating a little box. So if you see that your left knee is kind of flopping past the right, what are you feeling here? Do you feel more in your back? Okay, so go into the separation of your feet and hands to prayer. And I want you to just take a small turn. The second you feel like your left hip comes in front of your right, you're done, you're stopped. And then focus on like the weight in your heels, your core engaged, looking sideways, and more of an isometric movement. That's it. Chair pose, pull it around. This is one of those, let's just get it over with. Drag the hands to prayer. Inhale the breath, let's hook and twist. Like, why drag it out? Let's go the other way, yeah. It doesn't get easier or better, so just bang it out. Pay attention though to your breath and that your right knee isn't sliding past your left. The rest, you really just need to set it up in a way that you know you can maintain with stability in your body. So it doesn't matter how deep you are. Looks good, Meg. A few more. Stay with me. Chair pose. Pull it around. Sit two inches deeper because you can. And then shoot up to stand up. Drag it to prayer. Drop your arms. Drop your arms and just stand for a second. 
Great. You're going to stand on your right leg. You're going to drag your left knee in towards your navel. Give it a good little squeeze. Okay. Just stand on your right leg. Mm -hmm. Give it a little squeeze. You're going to take your right hand to the outside of your left thigh. And we're going to go into a little twist. I'd rather you be in this version than go for the version where it's full, it's dancing Shiva, where you grab the outside of your foot and you kick forward. You can also just be halfway. But what we don't want is leaning forward or leaning back. So you got to pick one that you know that you're staying upright. Perfect. In this case, you can start to look sideways. Eventually, one day, we'll look all the way back. One day. Good. Pull around to center. The arms up, the leg up. Yeah, the arms up, the leg up. Wrap your left thigh around your right thigh. In order to do this, you do have to bend the right leg. The left arm wraps. If this doesn't work, just give yourself a bear hug. Now, my foot still doesn't wrap around my calf because of this damn knee. But you, if your foot gets around there, you go for it. If not, just let it kind of hang out. Or you can do a little dance move where the toe kind of plies. Yeah. The, Jess is doing it with the foot on the block, which is a great way. What we're looking for is a straight line of energy down the center line of our body. So squeeze everything even. Stay with it. Keep the legs really, really tight. Just unravel your arms. Now unravel your left leg and step warrior one. Warrior one. Straighten your right leg on track. Scoot your back foot in about an inch or two. Yeah, both arms up and you've got like a short stance between your two feet. Right hand on hip, left arm extends up. You're gonna reach way out, steer your hips back and we'll set up for twisting triangle. I use a block, I place it to the instep of the foot on its highest setting. The right hand on the flat part of the back so you can feel, am I aligned? And then you start to look sideways and then you stack it open in your own way. So having the arm extending up towards the sky is like the icing on a cake. Like it's, it tastes good, but you don't need to do it. If you have self-control. Happy birthday, Jess. This song will always in my heart remind me of you. Yes. The perfect start. Two more. Right hand down, fold over your right leg, let it go. Just let it go. You could slide blocks under your hands. Sometimes it's nice to even crawl your hands back and flex your right foot if you're more flexible. Yeah. Good, come to the fingertips, long spine, reset the right foot, and then just step to the top of the mat, feet about hips width distance apart. Long spine on the inhale breath, exhale the breath, fold into yourself, let that all go. And then root to rise, come all the way up to a standing position and drag it to prayer at heart, drop your arms. Standing on your left leg, the right leg comes up, you're gonna reach for the outer part of your right leg with your left hand. Start really, really basic, work on the alignment, Okay, so the left hand comes to the outside of that right thigh and the right arm reaches back. If you feel that you can add on on this side, give it a whirl. If not, just stay here and really work on quadricep of the left leg zipping up and your breath supporting the shape. Pull around to center, arms up, leg in space. Keep it up. Wrap your right thigh around your left thigh. You're gonna have to bend your left leg in order to do it like a little chair. Set up that foot, either wrap it or keep it and then wrap the arms up. So you're sitting into eagle, standing on your left leg. If you got lost in translation, you're on left side eagle pose. Take your eagle however it suits your practice. Yeah, if you like to fold a little in eagle, that's called sleeping eagle. Someone made that up, yeah. I'm pretty sure of it, yeah. Weights in that standing left heel. You have a few more breaths, so play around. 
or just hold it in space wherever you're at. Lift the torso if you drop it down. Keep the legs really tight. First unravel just your arms, okay? The left leg is set up. Not much, much needs to happen. Just unravel and step your right leg back, warrior one. Warrior one. Now straighten the left leg on track. Keep your arms very active. You may need to step your right foot up and forward just a tiny bit. Left hand comes to hip, right arm stays way up. Reach way out in front of you and set up for twisting triangle. So we did all the work to get here. Yeah, I like the block on a high setting. And sometimes they even play with bringing the block a little more forward. Right, and that gets me to align. Yeah, it gets you to kind of slide your hips back. Yeah. Perfect. Let's see what's happening here. Take your right foot over here more. Turn it a little more towards the front of the room. Perfect. Now you're good. Didn't take much. Andy, you're looking good. Stay with it. A few more. This is one of those poses. It's a challenging posture, but we've done all the work to get to this point. So it should feel pretty good being here. Exhale the breath, fold. Fold over your left leg. Jackie in the front row, walk your left foot over to the left. Yeah. And then do what feels good here. If you want to walk your hands back, flex your left foot, maybe prop the hands up on blocks. Just kind of melt your torso down. Two more. If the foot is lifted, replant it down, plant the, plant the hands and step to a down dog. Just step into a nice down dog. Yeah. Roll forward to plank. Lower halfway to a push up. Drag yourself to a really smooth up dog or cobra. Hips go up and back down dog. Step the right foot forward, crescent lunge. You may decide to drop your back knee down in crescent lunge, totally up to you. Rise. This is our last standing pose on the right side. Drag the hands to prayer at heart. You're gonna lean out a little, hook the elbow and twist. Yeah, so if you get here and it feels like, you know, I really can't support it, drop your back knee. If you prefer just taking an easy twist, that would be sliding your left hand onto a block to the instep of the right foot. It's a really nice way to take this pose as well. Grip your right hip in, activate your back leg, and lean back just a little bit so the crown of the head lines up with that back heel. Two more. Hands to frame your front foot. Walk your right foot to the center of the mat. Slide your left knee up and sit. It may not be as pretty. Right. So when you sit down, you're sitting on your bum. Your right leg bends over your left leg. Now, if having this left leg bent doesn't work, left leg goes straight. Okay? Hug the knee in. Inhale the breath. Exhale, look over the shoulder and twist. Good, come back to center, you're gonna counter stretch, it does nothing for you, it just feels really good. Yeah, you gotta do something, right. Come back to neutral, you're gonna bring the legs up and we're gonna find Boat Navasana. I like my hands on something. You could have your hands on blocks. Yeah, no one cares if the legs are bent or straight. Right, what we're looking for is the eyes of the shoulders open and we're deep in our core muscles, you got it. You're right on point. You're gonna lower to a low boat. Lower back spreads. That's right. Pull it back up. Cross the ankles, step or float, vinyasa. It's the message. The left foot lands when you're ready. Crescent lunge, here we go. Crescent lunge. I mean, Jerry was on to something. He knew a few things, a few insider tricks. Drag the hands to prayer, lean forward, hook the elbow, and twist. Yeah. 
Yeah, take it as an easy twist if it's not working out. Do you see what I sent you on Instagram? The hardest song for John Mayer to learn and all the stuff was Slipknot. Yeah, because it's like very technical, like a lot going on. Two more. Hands to frame your front foot. So before you go anywhere, this is the trick. Walk your foot to the center and then slide your right knee to the back of your left foot and then sit right down. Yeah, perfect. And then you'll take your twist. Inhale the breath, exhale, look over the shoulder and twist it out. Two more. Come back to center, go the opposite direction. And I've got a treat for you. When you get out of the pose, the left leg swings behind you, you're in half pigeon on the right side. If that didn't work, you step back to a down dog and you re-slide that right knee forward, half pigeon right side. Yeah. Sometimes it just works out. Yeah. Perfect. And then you melt. For some reason, it doesn't work today. Let me know. We'll set you up another way. Switch left side. If you're you're just you want to move through a down dog, is probably the easiest way. All right, you're going to come up nice and slow. Lean on the left side. Swing the right leg around. You're going to take your blocks right by your hips, okay? And you're going to bend your legs in half. Mm -hmm. These might need to move depending on, like, how long your arms are and how long your torso. So there's no, no right or wrong. You're going to press your hands into the blocks. It's like a little tricep thing. And you're going to lift up to bridge. So, like, immediately I know I need to walk out. Like, it wasn't set right. Yep. So you're in a bridge. A reverse bridge. Mm -hmm. Reverse tabletop. You got it. And um, if your neck is a little eh, just keep your neck neutral, okay? So this is instead of uh, bridge and wheel today. You're gonna slide your seat back and press into the blocks and flex your feet. Rebend the legs and lift. You're gonna slide your seat back, you're gonna press and you're gonna lift one leg. You got it. Lower it down, you're gonna bend your legs, lift up. You're gonna slide your seat back, you're gonna press, you're gonna lift the other leg. So press, 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 sit up tall. Lower it down, bend the legs one more, lift up. Slide your seat back and see if you can lift both legs. 
lower down. <laughs> Lay down. Wasn't that fun? It's actually much, yes, it's much easier to practice at home in, a, in like this. You could practice like this, it's fun. Lay down, take your block, any direction that works for you, shove it underneath, yep. And then set up for supported bridge, okay? The highest is gonna be the most aggressive, so decide what feels best. And then one leg at a time, you're gonna lift the legs up. So this is a good flush for the legs, lactic acid, the legs go straight up towards the sky, even on a really low setting, it's wonderful. If you're on a high setting, interlace the hands around the block and that's gonna give you a little extra. Yeah, and then close your eyes. Even if your knees are a little bent today, it's fine. Not what we want. It's the wrong song. Yeah. Oh, it's annoying. Guess what? Bend your legs in half. Mm -hmm. Take your feet down to the floor. Lift your hips up. It's like totally not even cooperating. It's just playing its own song. Slide your block underneath, out from underneath. And lower yourself down. Hug your knees in towards your chest. Give them a big squeeze. You're welcome. Drop your knees over to the right. I don't think Spotify likes transitions. <laughs> uh, or Sonos, there's no interest in transitions. Rock up to center, drop your knees over the other direction. Okay, let's see what happens. Yeah. Drop your knees the other direction. And then come up to center, hug your knees in and slide into Shavasana. The next minute or two, enjoy the complete silence. <laughs> Close your eyes and just let go. Take a big breath in. Take a loud exhale breath out. Arms reach up over the top of the head. Give yourself a full body stretch. If you prefer staying down, stay down. Hug your knees in towards your chest. Give them a big squeeze. And rock up any way that feels good in your body and just sit up tall. If you can keep your eyes closed for the final moments, it's extra special. hands to prayer. The yoga practice is truly a gift. I hope that you recognize that and enjoy it and feel grounded. Bow your head for a second. Have some gratitude. It is the best attitude. Lift your head, open your eyes. Namaste. Go out there, have an awesome after you, afternoon. Enjoy birthday celebrations. End of summer celebrations. We celebrate transitions together as a community.
And I will see you next time. Just gonna stop this. Yeah, right.